sister. Yeah. Oh. Scotty beamed his guts into space! No way! It's like the punch bowl at the adult table. There's only one punch bowl. Kids grow up so fast these days. Sometimes I don't want to be on a show because I enjoy it and I don't want to get taken out of it. Like me on Game of Thrones would not have been great. He would be like, that's weird that he's on Game of Thrones. I mean, maybe I could have made the last season better, but. <laughs> I do look like I'm loosely related to Peter Dinklage though. I do. Oh, hey! Yeah, no, we're hungry! Jackson, Jackson, Jackson! My very first job ever that like uh, got me, a, my sad car was, I had one line on the Gilmore Girls, but that was like a fluke. I just could not get an audition, no matter how many commercials I booked, it didn't matter. And I met a lady who said she knew a manager who was looking for people, and I met him, and he was like, you know what, I've seen your commercials, I've looked at some stuff, let's just, I'll send you on a couple auditions, we'll see how it goes. First audition he sent me out on was Breaking Bad. Yo, for real, this is all you. All me. Vince cast me off tape and I flew out to the desert. Albuquerque, apparently they were shooting a show there on this new network called AMC with the guy from Malcolm in the Middle and the show was about meth. Like nobody knew anything. And then I shot my episode and I still didn't understand it. <laughs> and uh, Aaron Paul was living there and he was like, um, hey, come over. I went over to his place and we watched the pilot together. And I was like, oh my God, this is way before it was released. I was like, this is like an independent movie. Like I had no, I'd never seen a TV like that. And then nobody watched it for three years and it almost got canceled over and over and over again. And then uh, it got on Netflix and became this phenomenon. I ever tell you about my Star Trek script? Star Trek script? Yeah, I gotta write it down is all. The Enterprise is five parsecs out of Rigel 12. Nothing's going on, neutral zone is quiet, the crew is bored, so they put on a pie-eating contest. A lot of people love the Star Trek scene. That scene was directed by Brian Cranston, which is funny enough. Um, and in that scene, I'm wearing uh, these gloves. Here, we got them right here. Um, that I wear still, because I came to Chicago for a Bears game, and uh, these are the gloves that I'm wearing in that scene. And this is a Chicago Bears reference that nobody knows about in Breaking Bad. Brian Cranston is more intimidating than he is inspiring, <laughs> to be honest. I remember one day he was making fun of me. We were at craft service and he's just, he likes to make fun of me because, you know, he knows I'm a comedian and I can handle it. And he's also kind of a jerk. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but uh, he's making fun of me. And then he walked on the camera like 30 seconds later and was incredible. Like I was watching on the monitor. I was like, he went from there to Walter White to like crying and like, angry and all that. In 30 seconds, I was like, I can't do that. I, I, I can't do that. So I don't know if it's inspiring as it was so crushing. <laughs> oh, that's the way these things go. You ready? Yeah. It's like going to like a high school reunion, you know? If your high school was like really cool. The premiere was insane. The premiere, they didn't tell us anything. We were just getting delivered there in a car by yourself and I'm not very cool. So you get delivered and you're like, you know, you're out on the street and you're like, oh, where do I go? And that's what it usually is. We got delivered there and the car opened up. We were projected on a huge video screen and there was nine grandstands filled with fans cheering like it was the Oscars. I nearly had a panic attack, it was insane. And then it took us two hours to walk through, just walk the red carpet and talk to all the news outlets and everything. It was the most insane thing I've ever done. Morning. Morning. I think I might need some better brakes. You need our new Midas Secure stuff. I did commercials before like 2000 to 2004 and then like 2007 to 2010, so like, yeah, I did about 40 commercials overall, and I've done a lot of, I did a lot of, it's not an easy game. It's worse now, now it's like not sustainable because of the internet and everything. But yeah, I did a lot of commercials. I did a lot of beer commercials, Midas commercial. I did an insurance commercial. 
I did a sink commercial once, Boy, I, a, a Wrigley's gum commercial, everything I had done at some point. Yep, cell phones. Yeah, 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 here we go. It's in a mission, so don't spoil it. Smoke a cigarette and use the toilet. When I started Boom uh, 2004, I was 22. Uh, the only person that was younger than me to get that job was Jordan Peele, was 21 when he started. And uh, I came in right when he was finishing. Yeah, and there's it was just, I knew that all these guys from SNL and Matt TV at that time and uh, writers on Daily Show and correspondents and all these like comedy gods, a, a bunch of them had done Boom Chicago and uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. So I auditioned and I, it was like an unofficial kind of comedy college where you're paid to do improv and sketch, like Second City kind of style show all over Europe for, I did it for three years. And that's how I lost my voice. I kept doing that show over and over and over again and I just kept losing my voice and it stuck this way. And I think the wrong person just left. Perfect, that's a wrap. That guy was your dad? The Russo brothers were running the show and they directed me in a Domino's commercial and the Russo brothers called me and were like, hey, do you want to come do just like a day thing on Community? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I came and did it. And then they would just call me every once in a while like, hey, do you just want to come for the day? And I was like, yeah. It wasn't like I got cast. It was just them asking like if I wanted to come sit in for the day. And sometimes I could and sometimes I couldn't. So I ended up doing it like two, three, three times. Hey, where am I anyway? Why, this is the Fang Kingdom of Huge, of course. <laughs> you fell through that crack in my ceiling and landed in a normal-sized pie. Cartoons are the best job in the world. VO is the best job in the world. You work maybe two hours a week. You uh, just, especially kids' shows, you just get to have fun and do the dumbest version of everything. It's the height of comedy for me. <laughs> People are like trying to do this like subtle, cool comedy. I'm like, no, I want some Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, hit, hit somebody in the balls. You know what I mean? That makes me laugh. You were the aunt to my cousins most of your life. You were five foot four. At the end, you were five foot one. I actually auditioned for Thomas's part many, many times, and then they ended up giving to Thomas last minute, as the story goes. Uh, but then they added a character on the show. They added a whole new character just for me. Then they brought me into a bunch of episodes of The Office, which was cool. But yeah, we shot the spinoff as an episode of The Office. And uh, it didn't quite work. I had so much fun. It was insane. I was on the finale of The Office and the finale of Breaking Bad within like a month. And I got to go to so many cool parties. <laughs> and uh, even being in the finale of The Office, I kept being like, why am I here? Why do you guys have me here? I mean, I'm not... I'm not gonna leave, but this is great. He was not only a good pitcher, but he's a good batter. He would hit home runs. They went over and over. He's like, I throw this shit 90 miles an hour. In the 80s, the, the year 1980s, not in the 80s of speedball. Oh Jesus, I gotta try that again. Yeah, Jim Abbott was just a, a fascination I had, and Derek and I had talked, because I knew him through UCB stuff, and he was like, I knew, when he was making the Funny or Die version of Drunk History, which was just um, a couple sketches. And then he started making the show, and I was like, hey man, I'll drink on the show, please, I wanna do it. And then he calls you and you just kind of, both kind of decide on the story together, and then you uh, kind of come up with your own telling, and then they come to your house and you drink a lot and just tell the story over and over and over for like five hours. But they make you take a physical, they have a nurse on set that gives you electrolyte shots every 30 minutes. But you're aggressively drunk. I drank three full bottles of wine by myself. And apparently, Jeremy, the director, said that I was naked towards the end of it. Like, because I got hot or something, I started taking off all my clothes. And I was like trying to help them move equipment. And they're like, no, you don't have to help us. Like, no, I got, because they're in my house. So I got to help you. Let's lift all of the camera. They're like, don't lift the camera, you drunk idiot. And I like waving, like just in my underwear. But I was dead. I'm not dead. I'm alive. Just, just, uh, you've been crying? God, I am so touched. Yeah, right here. Oh. <laughs> I got a call and they were like, do you want to go do a movie in Oklahoma for a month? And I was like, 
yeah, I'd like to get out of LA. Ryan Hansen uh, from Party Down and a bunch of other stuff. I knew he was doing it and I knew that we had mutual friends and I thought he was a funny guy. So, and uh, from what I heard, I was the reason he did it as well. So like we like went and did it. In the movie, uh, yeah, there's a lot of football players in it, actually. There's a bunch of guys who used to play at Oklahoma State University, University of Oklahoma, because uh, we shot in Oklahoma. And they were hitting us really hard. And a couple guys had to be like, hey man, it's a movie. Like, you can't hit me like that, I'm gonna die. You have to stop, that really hurt. So, but it was fun. If Brexit's taught us anything, it's that Britain is a proud country. Home to respected politicians. And Nigel Farage. How thoughtful. And has a relaxed attitude to immigration. Oh, come on, man. I directed a whole season of a TV show in England called Borderline. It's on Netflix. I directed the whole first season. I helped create the show and cast it. And me and uh, one of my best friends growing up, his name is Mike O'Tee. And uh, his partner, my now partner, Chris Gow, all the three of us kind of made this show together. And it was uh, similar to The Office, but about a border, line, border agents in the UK. And I didn't act in it, and I just directed it and helped write and produce. And we made this show on, went for no money and no time. And I'm really proud of it. I think it's really good. I appreciate you giving us the best show of the 2010s, but also, like, of course we are. <laughs> Have you seen the show? Come on, it's amazing. Take that, Game of Thrones. <laughs> I think Breaking Bad is the best show of the decade because it got better every single episode. There was never a dip. And every other show that I've seen it dips. That one, every episode gets better and better and better and better. Yeah.